Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so like my previous episode, I'll do my best with the pronunciations here. I relied on Google Translate to provide them and I created my own phonetic spellings to help me do my best. I'll definitely stumble a bit, but it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third for you. All right, today's show is the second of seven wines I'll be reviewing from the Alentejo region of Portugal. Today's wine is another free sample and it comes from the Adega de Borba winery. Now, they were a co-op founded in 1955 in Borba. By the way, Adega means wine house or winery in Portuguese. And over the years, they expanded their operations to produce 1.2 million cases of wine. They source from 2,300 hectares of vineyards from 270 growers with a 70-30 split of red versus white varieties. Now, during the past 10 years, they have invested in new buildings, equipment, and made a commitment to sustainability. This includes a green roof on top of the winery they built in 2013 and installing solar panels in 2019. They also opened a restaurant on site in February of 2019. Now, they have a total of 10 wine brands, plus a selection of brandies and liqueurs. In addition to that, they also produce olive oil and vinegar. Now, when you look them up on Google Maps or even their contact page, you'll get their main address, which just looks like warehouses. They have a whole complex behind all that, and then the winery itself is further back. You can also see the winery is surrounded by trees. Now, from what I've already seen on Google Earth and just searching images, these are probably cork trees. You can also see vineyards scattered around the area. I'm sure they source from many of those vineyards. The winery's website has a lot of information to check out. They have some inf additional information about the Borba region in addition to Alentejo. Definitely check out the link in the description. Here are the stats on the wine. The 2015 Hatulu de Corchiza Vino Cinto Reserva. I, I know it looks and sounds differently, right? It is from the Alentejo DOC. It has chalky clay and schist soils. It's a blend of Trincadera, Alicante Boucher, Aragonese, Castellaum, and then percentages were not available. So I, it's just that blend. Aged for 12 months in third and fourth year French oak, basically neutral barrels. Potential aging is 10 years per the text sheet. It is an ex libris uh, wine considered a library release known as their cork wine due to the label and that's what corchiza means in Portuguese. It's 13.5% alcohol. It's TA or total acidity is 5.7 grams per liter. Its pH is 3.5. The sulfite or SO2, the free SO2 in it is less than 120 milligrams per liter. That's the equivalent of 120 ppm. Something rarely given in a text sheet, but some of the wines in the set list it. This is well within the range of what's normal. They produce 250,000 bottles, at least from the 2018 info, but I'm sure it's the same because everything else was the same as 2015's text sheet. Just a bit of trivia here. Aragonés is probably better known by its name in Spain, Tempranillo. It's also known as Tinta Ruiz in the rest of Portugal. All right, so let's get into the wine. Bam, bam, bam. So it's not, I don't think it's actual cork. If it is, it's really, really thin. It could be. I thought there was another wine that I had seen or heard of or, or someone talked talk to me about. They actually had a cork label. Or maybe it was a, it might have been a whiskey. It was somebody had a cork label and it was thin and they had to make some technology to bend the cork right. But um, this, it, it kind of feels like cork. So it may be like, like a paper thin cork. All right. 
So you're going to see a theme where there's a lot of Alicante Boucher uh, in and Aragonés in these in these wines that I'm doing this whole set of wines for the red wines. Those are basically the most common grapes that are grown in Alentejo or in the Alentejo. Uh, I can't remember how to say the wider IGP. Alentejerno. Alentejerno. Oh, I like the smell of this one. So, it's got, I mean, you're going to hear me say a lot of raspberry, blackberry a lot for these, these wines, but it really has that. But there's also this kind of, I don't like this, this, um, like lemon pledge, like really like polished wood. Like you just like you just like polished a, a table, like a hardwood table. You've got a little bit of leather, you've got a little bit of potpourri, cedar box, tobacco, like a sweet tobacco, raspberry, blackberry, blueberry. Everything's ripe in nature, almost a little overripe. Vanilla, clove. Even though it's third and fourth year barrel, I feel like it's still giving you a little bit. It's not over the top. It's like, oh my goodness, this is like 100% French new oak. But you're still going to get a little bit of influence. Actually, it's a little bit of, not just the sweet tobacco, but a little bit of just like literally like just cigarette, like tobacco, like, like a fresh cigarette. It's kind of funny because a few weeks ago at Tasting Group, we had a wine that was like literally, not this wine doesn't smell just like that, but the wine itself like smelled like a fresh pack of cigarettes, even with the cellophane. This does not smell like that. It was a good thing in how we perceived it, at least the two of us who perceived it. So, but I can kind of see that, like that, that fresh, you know, like cigarette tobacco. Let's just taste it. So all that stuff I described on, on the nose, it's not there. No, it, it's, it's, it's there. Palate confirms the nose. But the fruit's like really ripe in nature. Again, kind of on the sweet side. Not that it's got necessarily sugar, like a, like a ton of sugar in it. But it comes across as a sweeter wine. A very fruit forward wine. The tannin feels like more powerful than the last one I did. So it, it, it's, it's letting you know it's there. But that tobacco, that red and black fruit, the uh, cedar box, like the vanilla and the clove and the that type of stuff isn't really as prominent. It was just maybe on the aroma I was catching a little bit of it. But you've got this lush fruit quality to it. It's like super easy to drink. I don't remember if I said the price. I, I know it's in the lower third, but I believe it's $18. So... You've got an $18 bottle of wine here that tastes really good. And I mean, I bet you, you could put this up against something that was, you know, more than 20, maybe not like 40 or 50, but something that was in that 20 to $30 range. In many ways, this is like an alternative, like Zinfandel or like just a really wrap, really ripe uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from California because you're getting that, that big fruit. The alcohol is not high, like a Zinfandel would be. But yeah. A little rose petal. It's a good wine. If you can find it, I'd buy it. Absolutely. All right, so that's today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button down there and subscribe. And then tell your friends. And until next time, see you later.